Hey guys, welcome back to another video of Alex's Flying Club. This is Alex, and I am recording a video for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2004. This will be the first video for this game. Uh, I've had it for maybe about half a year now, and uh, for a while I couldn't get it to run on my new computer um, on Windows 8, and then I realized how to how to fix that. So now now it's up and running and I just wanted to show you um, a cool airplane that I like um, that comes with the game. It's the Vickers Vimy bomber. Um, it was a British bomber during World War I heavy bomber and uh, after the war it saw um, service as a, um, a civilian aircraft as well. It actually set several uh, famous records for distance flying but this is really uh, an interesting aircraft to fly it's you know unlike anything else that I've uh, flown in flight simulators uh, I was just trying it out today um, and uh, it's really heavy in the controls it's very uh, very sluggish but I kinda like that sometimes um, in an airplane it makes it kind of um, uh, feel like a boat <laughs> rather than a rather than a maneuverable airplane but it's um, fully loaded with weight at a hundred percent fuel this airplane will only climb a thousand feet per hour that's really 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 slow rate of climb um, so at, at first I was trying to take take off with the um, normal fuel load of a hundred percent and this thing didn't even make it off this runway. I crashed, I crashed into the trees um, on this small field. And by the way, this field that we're on is uh, Curtis Field out in Newark, Illinois. And this is where I went trike flying. I think I mentioned that in my one of my previous videos. Um, I went flying on an ultralight trike. And uh, this is a small rural field, but I thought it would be, it's kind of cool that it's in this game. And... Um, yeah, I wanted to do a video from it, from the field, and thought this was a pretty cool uh, airplane to do it with. It's definitely not an ultralight, but let's uh, let's get inside and check out the cockpit. Okay, so now my track AR kicked in, and uh, as you can see, this is a two-seater plane. There's the second uh, co-pilot seat. Interesting thing is he doesn't have the control he doesn't have a duplicate controls I have the rudders here and the uh, control column um, which is really interesting because it's almost like a steering wheel in a car and you can see the um, the chain behind it it's like a bike like a bicycle chain that moves the ailerons so let's uh, let's do a let's do a flight with this aircraft I'm gonna pull out the checklist which is the nice thing about uh, Microsoft flight simulators is a uh, very detailed uh, flight um, controls uh, they're modeled fairly well I think pretty much everything in this aircraft you can control the f petrol valve the uh, fuel pump um, and uh, the only thing that I can't control is the, the cowl flaps it can't seem to move them but um, that's that's okay Maybe I'll figure it out, or maybe they're not meant to be controlled. So let's pull out the pre-flight checklist. Here it is. And um, let's start with the port engine. Turn the master switch on. The port petrol valve, open. The port petrol pump, open. Throttle cracked which means to open it slightly. Magneto switches on. I think that's how you pronounce it. Magneto, Magneto. I'll assume I'm right, but I'm sure you can correct me in the comments. Um, port starter switch. So this will rev the engine up. There it goes. You'll see the oil temperature rising steadily. Um, port oil pressure. Yeah, sorry, this is the oil pressure. The oil temperature is right there. 
and the port and the uh, port fuel pressure is on this uh, on this dial. So the port engine's good; it's going to heat up, and then we'll get the starboard engine going. Same process: petrol valve open, pump on, throttle. Cracked a little bit. Um, where was I? Magneto switches on, and the uh, starter switch. And there it goes. This is actually my first video using Trek IR, and um, I've had to adjust it for each of the games that I play because each each is slightly different. And uh, yeah, it's really nice. It really makes it feel like you're sitting in the aircraft rather than just using the um, these views with the joystick button that I just try to do. It's not really working with the Trek IR. So I'm not really sure how long I have to wait for these engines to heat up. Um, I think maybe I'll wait until the oil pressure gets to about 40 psi on this engine since I started it later. Let's see what this one's at. This one's at 35. So I think I'll continue the video once these engines are good to go. And we'll be taking off in this beautiful heavy aircraft. Okay, I'm back, and actually I was wrong, I wasn't waiting, I didn't want to wait for um, the oil, let me move this checklist, the oil um, pressure to be 40, I don't think it's going to get there with an idle throttle, I wanted the oil temperature to be 40 degrees, and they're pretty much there already, this one's also at 40 degrees, so we're, I think we're good to go, I have this checklist here, um, for the takeoff and climb. So this aircraft is a lot lighter, it's a 25% fuel so it'll pick up speed faster than if it was fully loaded. Um, rotate, we're going to take off between 40 to 40, 45 miles an hour and we're going to climb at 60 to 70 miles an hour. And it wants us to climb at the same pitch attitude as on the runway. So this is the pitch indicator. It's 8 degrees up right now so we're going to be this aircraft wants to climb at 8 degrees. So let's uh, get rolling. I'm just going to increase the throttle. And I've already flown it like this once. It's going to put the nose down pretty fast in this configuration. You actually hear this weird sound as it picks up speed. Yeah, there it was. I'm not really sure what that is. Maybe it's the tail skid hitting the ground as I took off. Or well, there's also a front skid that prevents the engines from from uh, hitting the grass when the nose uh, wants to go level. So I think one of those two skids is actually causing that weird crunching sound on takeoff and landing and the same thing happens. So now we're, we're up, we're at 60 miles an hour, but we want to be about 9 degrees pitch indicator, let's bring it down a bit to 8. And uh, there's Curtis Field in Newark, Illinois. I have it here on GPS because it's really hard to find. Without GPS. It's going to be OC8 right there. So I'll be looking for that when I go into land. So there is really, really no purpose to this flight. I'm not going to be shooting anybody like I usually do in my videos. This is just more of a joyride and a pretty cool aircraft. 
historic uh, aircraft from, from World War I. Um, so we'll be flying through the Illinois countryside here. This is Flight Simulator 2004. I haven't modded it at all or anything. Um, so the terrain doesn't look as great as uh, some of the scenery packages that they have for uh, Flight Simulator X. But it's, it's still nice. If, if you like aviation, um, this is still pretty cool, I think. Uh, you don't want to do any sudden movements in this aircraft. It's pretty hard to control, especially when you're climbing. Uh, I find that once you once you have a good altitude and you can go level and even descend, it controls a lot better than, than now. Uh, but the rudder is very small very very small in fact it almost has no effect when you kick it to full rudder so I'm gonna kick it to as a test I'm gonna kick it full right rudder you see the rudder indicator that that ball barely moving even at full rudder so I'm gonna level out I should give it a little bit more opposite rudder let's get it back on track we've got our compass right there, so I want to head south, turn my little bicycle wheel, and oh, look at that, it's a Beechcraft Baron aircraft coming in, I haven't seen any other aircraft, it's about 8,000 feet away, make sure not to crash into him, I'm, I am a pretty large target, you should be able to see this huge kite like object in the air. Is that a river up ahead? It looks like it. I think that may be the Illinois River, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm going to continue climbing and uh, head over toward that river and see if we can find some, some interesting things to look at. And I'll continue this video once I am at that location. See ya. I'm back and we are now over the river. I can see a bridge there. Kind of in the distance. Whoa, track IR is having some problems there, but ah, let's see if I can fix it. Reset. Hopefully we're good. Okay. So there's the bridge. I also see a factory out in the distance. Well, it looks like a factory. I see two smokestacks. So I'm going to do a quick flyby of the bridge. And this thing is actually having an even harder time climbing as it gets higher. I started off at about 8% pitch, and I could retain over 60 miles an hour. Now I had to retain over 60 miles an hour. I could only do about one or two percent pitch so this thing climbs like a I don't know what very slowly it's possible that I'm just not doing something I'm not I'm not maintaining the engines correctly and they're losing um, RPM but although RPM seems to be staying the same so I don't, know, I don't know what's up, it just must be a heavy aircraft and it's not even fully loaded. I can't even imagine how bomber pilots would take this on a mission. How long it would take them to climb to altitude. Be interesting to see what their bombing altitude was. So 
Sorry about the shakiness here. My track IR is having problems. are, it's so that the pilot and co-pilot don't accidentally stick their hand out and get it chopped off by a propeller. And I think um, they put those there having learned the hard way. There are a few cases, of, I don't know about this aircraft in particular, but just in the aircraft configurations where the propeller was close to a um, crew member, there were a few cases of hacked off um, limbs and hands because there is no protective barrier. So there's a bridge below there. I'm going to see if I can fly over to that factory and see what that, what it actually is. have full rudder left, full stick left, and it took that, it took this aircraft like 10 seconds to respond to that. Very sluggish. So let's see what altitude I'm at. I'm at about 500 feet. Sure, this 500 and not 5,000. Although, who knows? It's hard. It's hard for me to tell. Yeah, no, it's 500. I'm gonna level out at about this altitude because I'm kind of sick of climbing. And cruising RPMs are at 1,800. Set 1800 RPM for engine one. That's the top, topmost dial. 1800. Hopefully this will keep it straight and level at a, at a decent speed. stacks are. They're like some kind of utilities plant. It looks less and less like a factory. Maybe not even there maybe not even smokestacks. Let's take a look behind behind us. You can see those uh, rudders. Look at look how, how little they move. They barely affect the aircraft. 
struts structures. It reminds me of a box kite, this, uh, this aircraft. I'm not sure what that is. Alright. I think I'm going to turn back toward uh, Curtis Field and see if I can find it. Let me check my GPS here. Kind of slip sliding all over the place. OC8, there it is. I need to go... Let's see, I'm going... North... I'm going about east right now, I have to go... I'm pretty sure I'm not flying this the way I'm supposed to. I haven't really taken any lessons in Microsoft Flight Simulator, even though that is a feature that's offered. And I need to, let's see, let's get a bearing here. Let's go 3, 2, 0. To get to Curtis Field. Yeah, so I'm not really sure how to fly this, I'm just kind of winging it, no pun intended. But, so far so good, we're still in the air, and uh, takeoff in this aircraft isn't that bad. Or, I mean, uh, landing in this aircraft isn't that bad. So I'll continue this video once we get closer to the field. Okay, so I'm getting closer to Curtis Field, and I think that's what those two indicators out in the distance are are the two ends of the runway, but I'm not sure. I've been slowly descending at about 70 miles an hour. Curtis Field should be straight ahead of me. On the GPS, it's right see my cursor here, but there's Newark, and it's right there, right to the left of Newark. Again, that's Newark, Illinois, not Newark, New Jersey. So I don't want to bleed too much altitude. I'm at about 250 feet right now. Because it's definitely easier to lose the altitude in this aircraft than to gain it back. So I want to stay on the. I want to err on the side of caution here.
aircraft, the uh, Vickers Vimy, actually um, was the first to do a transatlantic flight, and this is something I didn't know. Um, even before Lindbergh, um, it did the first non-stop uh, transatlantic flight from Newfoundland to Ireland, I believe. But it wasn't a solo flight, I think it was two pilots. This cockpit, but this thing definitely looks a lot more flimsy than uh, Charles Lindbergh's aircraft. But it's got a better better view. Charles Lindbergh couldn't see anything. He had a fuel tank right in front of him. He had to poke his head out the window pretty much. And he actually credited uh, the guys that flew. For him, he said that they they paved the way for my flight. And this version, this uh, skin, if you will, for this aircraft, it's kind of a tan color. It's the transatlantic flight um, skin. It's one of the two default skins they have in, for this aircraft in the game in the uh, flight simulator package. speck of blue. And I think that's the field over there. I'm not quite sure. It's really hard to tell. The scenery is in really high, res high texture, high resolution. And again, I gotta make sure to not lose too much altitude as I'm looking for this field. Yeah, that definitely looks like the airstrip. So, that's my altitude here. 200 feet. So I'm gonna start my approach. And I think I'm a little high. Definitely a little high, but... This thing drops like a freaking... Elephant. So, uh, losing the altitude is not a problem. Obviously, there's no landing gear. I have to lower. Just have to get get this thing plopped in the ground. But first, I have to get aligned with the runway. I started my turn a little early, and I want a descent speed of about 60 to 65 miles an hour. As I, on my approach, and then I want uh, all my wheels to touch down at about 60 miles an hour. It's a very ugly approach, but it'll get the job done. Hopefully. This thing doesn't have brakes, and the runway is pretty short on this field, but just the amount of drag from the from the skids on the on the grass should be enough to stop stop this aircraft in pretty quick order. It's kind of doing some micro adjustments. Whoa! Need more airspeed.
touchdown. There's that ugly sound again. I think it's the forward skid. And I'll show you it once I get out of this airplane. I think it's the forward skid. Um, hitting the grass. All right, and we're on the ground. Still got the engines on. Let's turn those off and do one quick look outside the airplane. So I'll get my checklist. And uh, engine shut down. Put our throttles to idle. They're already at idle. Petrol valves off. turn the uh, fuel pump off too. I just don't think it made it onto the checklist. Um, Magneto switch is off. You can already hear the engine's been cut. And then master switch off. Our lights were never on, so we are good to go. And that's our flight in the Vickers Vimy. You can see the forward skid I was talking about right there. I'm surprised this that thing even holds the aircraft and doesn't doesn't break from the weight. But in any case, that was our flight in the Vickers Vimy from Curtis Field in Newark, Illinois. I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.